my friend. Welcome to Kithira, where clothes are dyed and noses are assaulted by disgusting smells. Why, I'm Marcos, of course, one of the most successful merchants in all of Greece. You really haven't heard of me? My name is known from Kefalonia to Kos. If you've ever paid money for something, I probably received a percentage. But enough about me. Let's go back to what you're doing here. I think it smells terrible, and I can't wait to get out of here. The colors are pretty, though. This little island was where dyers brought all the color to Greek fashion through an intensely stinky procedure. This tour will reveal the steps it took for workers to brew the dye. Try not to step in any mollusk guts as you enjoy your visit. I promise I'll meet you at the end of your tour. See you soon, my friend. In Greece, fabric and clothing were colored using natural dyes from shellfish, insects, and plants. Skilled craftsmen across the Greek world extracted dyes from these sources and combined them with other substances to create a variety of colors. The dyeing process supposedly produced incredibly pungent smells, and ancient writers would often comment on the stink in their works. Murex is the generic name for three species of mollusks that reside in the Mediterranean. The substance they secrete was used by craftsmen to create the most expensive dyes in the ancient world, the most famous of which was Tyrian purple. Fishing techniques varied depending on the type of mollusk. In shallow waters, fishermen could simply dive and catch the mollusks, but they set traps if the water was too deep. Being carnivorous, murex were often lured using dead animal flesh as bait. It was imperative that the mollusks be captured alive, as they only secreted the precious purple liquid needed for dyes upon death. The purple liquid that made up most dyes came from a gland in the murex. To collect it, workers would either crack open the mollusk's shell with a knife, or if it was smaller, crush it with a stone. Each mollusk only produced a small amount of liquid, and thousands of them were needed to produce even a gram of the substance. Because of this, captured mollusks were usually kept alive in seawater-immersed baskets until enough had accumulated to produce a satisfactory amount of dye.
the mollusk glands were mixed with salt and left to decompose for three days. Afterwards, the resulting mash was placed in a vat where it boiled until it was thickened and reduced to one sixteenth of its original volume. The dyers stirred this mixture and removed any impurities. This process produced the foul odor so reviled by ancient writers. Dyers checked the hue of the purple liquid by dipping in raw wool. The hue could be changed by adjusting the temperature of the liquid and by soaking the wool for different periods of time, with longer soaking producing deeper shades. The wool was dyed once before spinning and again before weaving to ensure it maintained its color. While Murex purple dyed wool easily, it did not adhere as well to other fabrics, such as linen. Most Greek garments were made from rectangular fabric that was rarely cut or sewn. They were normally folded around the body with girdles, pins and buttons. Dyeing served to give the garments a more unique style. Decorations were also widely used and were either woven or painted on. They depicted things like animals, human figures and mythological scenes. Textile manufacturing and trade was one of the most lucrative businesses in classical Athens. Textiles were made of either wool or linen, with wool being the most common. Women produced the garments worn in domestic life, although some men ran professional workshops that fulfilled the same need. Other textiles were made by slaves and laborers under the supervision of master weavers, fullers and dyers.
clothes didn't just keep people warm. They were used as a way to communicate social identities, like gender, status, and ethnicity. These could be expressed through garments and accessories, but also jewelry, hairstyles, perfumes, and cosmetics. Wealthy Greeks usually had garments of the highest quality, and all their accessories were decorated with gold, silver, or gemstones. Parasols and fans were also an important part of elite fashion, and were usually carried by accompanying slaves. The most common Greek garments were the peplos, the keton, and the hymation. The peplos, typically worn by women, was a body-length cloth. It was folded back on itself and worn draped over the body and pinned over the shoulders. The keton was a long garment with sleeves. Ankle-length ketones were normally worn by women, while men wore shorter versions of the garment. A hymation was a mantle that was worn over both the keton and the peplos. Outside of daily life, there were also specialized clothes worn only in exceptional situations like weddings and religious ceremonies. Good to see you again, my friend. I bet your clothes feel heavier now that you know how many mollusks were killed to dye them. But let's change the subject, yes? What else can I do for you? Then let's get right into it, starting with this question. Which purple dye was the most famous? I'm not uh, familiar with that specific shed. Sounds like something the Spartans would like. Try another answer. No, although I think I'll use that name if I ever market my own die. Marcos's marvelous mauve has a nice ring to it. Uh, I don't think so. Try again. Yes, the purple created from murex secretions was one of the most expensive and well-known dyes in the world. Here's another question. How did workers check the dye's hue? No, looking at the dye was not enough. Try again. It would not have been a good idea to stick a finger into a stinking boiling mixture of mollusk secretions. Keep trying. No, unless they wanted burn purple toes. <laughs> Try another answer. Correct! Workers dip wool into the mixture to gauge the exact hue of the dye. Almost done, my friend. Just one final question. Which body length garment was typically worn by women? Pelop was the legendary founder of the Olympic Games. Keep trying! Ahimation was a mantle worn over other types of clothing. Try again! 
The chlamys was a garment usually worn by men during hunting expeditions or military excursions. Try another answer. Correct. A peplos was a body-length cloth that a woman draped over her body and pinned around her shoulders. I had no idea you were so knowledgeable about fashion. But look at you. I should have known from what you're wearing. You've got it, my friend. Farewell for now. <laughs>